We are like-minded. So, so we'll ask our players because they're dreaming of being there and they've got one big game to go. Let's start on the Port Adelaide side of things. He is the Brownlow medal favourite and he is that with good cause. He's been such a driving factor in the Powers run to the top two and now four quarters away from what he dreams of. It'll be his third preliminary final. He tasted one early and then the bitter experience at the end last year of a thrilling loss to Richmond. Is it to be? Is it to be this time around? It lands so heavily with Port, who looked to be in great shape. Health-wise, form-wise, there is a sense of timing about this run. Our coverage will start Saturday night here on Fox Footy at 6.30. Eastern, the full build-up to it. And then all eyes to Adelaide Oval. Ollie Wines is with us. Ollie, it's always great to have you on 360. Welcome back. Good evening, guys. Thanks for having me. What are we, Tuesday night? Do, do, do you feel like there's a big event looming for you in a few days' time? Yeah, probably today. It sort of um, hit the playing group, having a main training session and beginning the week. Obviously, we haven't played for a couple of weeks, so we had a, we had a few days to sort of chill out and almost forget about footy a little bit and clear our heads. And, and now we're really um, focused in and, and starting the build-up for Saturday night. What do you go through in the build-up to a game? Where, do, you, do you have nerves or anxieties or do you feel just full-on excitement? How, how does it affect you these days? Yeah, I do get a little bit of anxiety, but um, I think that's held in check a lot more these days just, just from our, um, I guess, characteristics of our group. We're such a young and energetic group and, and the young boys just make it so much fun. So they don't really have a worry in the world at the moment, they're up and about, they're having a laugh and um, it probably calms the nerves for the boys who do get a bit anxious. Well done, Ollie, getting through the preliminary final, mate. You've had a fantastic season to date. Uh, what was your emotions? How did you feel watching the game on Saturday night when the doggies got over the line by the point? Yeah, just as, a, I guess, a football um, supporter, it was unreal to see a match like that. That's what you want to see in finals footy, um, going down to the line and just the atmosphere that was at the Gabba in that last quarter was was what finals footy is all about. And um, hopefully, obviously, we can win and, and um, have a great game like that. But um, that's what we play for, these moments. And, and there's no bigger um, match in a preliminary final. Did you have the... Uh... Mate, I presume you would have had a practice match of some sort or certainly match simulation over the weekend. Was it, was it pre that game on Saturday or was it post that game? And did you have a little bit of extra energy? <laughs> no, it was before. Um, it was Saturday morning and, and that led into um, our Port Magpies in the sample having their last game into that game. So it was a, it was a big game, a, a big day of football and um, definitely got the competitive juices going. But... Um, yeah, look, it was it was a lot to take out of that match on the Saturday night and um, we've began our preparation now. Ollie, what are your memories of your first preliminary final in your second season when you came up against the Hawks at the MCG? Not too much um, from those days. I, I think back to those now and, and they seem so long ago. <laughs> um, I think the thing that, that I've learnt definitely over my two experiences prelim finals that you've got to take your opportunities when they come. I think last year we, we lacked a little bit of composure throughout the match and, and didn't grasp our opportunities when they presented themselves. And um, if you don't, all of a sudden you're out and you're back to square one with um, 16 other teams. So uh, we're making the most of the opportunities this year and, and in the build-up. So do you share those experiences with each other or is that for everybody to, to ponder in their own hearts is what you lived through in the last... It was really that, that frenzied seven or eight minutes at the end of last year's prelim. No, we did, um, we did go back and, and look at it. It was the first thing we did this year when we came back as a group for pre-season. We, we got it all out of the air. Um, obviously, a lot of guys deal with those losses differently and, and some move on pretty quickly, some dwell on them for a while. So it was just good to sort of clear the air and, and start the pre-season off um, using that as motivation. We just saw Kenny in the vision there. Can you just give us an insight into how Kenny's been this week? Does he sort of fire and brimstone or is he calm? What's his emotions behind the scenes leading you boys? No, he's very calm. Um, he, he sort of, he reads the group really well. And what I said before about us being very energetic and, and having a laugh and not taking things too seriously, He's very uh, uh, observant of that and, and he fits the mould. So he's got some shocking jokes he pulls out early in the week <laughs> that 
don't really get a laugh and no one really has the, the guts to say to him, mate, that's not real funny. Don't like stop trying to make jokes. But um no, nah, he he's good. He's he'll know when to sort of get us switched on and, and start narrowing our focus as the week goes on. That must be a prerequisite for AFL coaches. The amount of players that accuse their coaches of <laughs> terrible jokes. <laughs> don't worry, I had an old one, Justin Lepich. Terrible jokes. He was a coach of mine and a teammate. So when you've had 12 months to get back there, Ollie, in a way there, there's a certain tyranny to a year like this. Is you spend the whole year trying to get back, and now you get to you get to soak it in and see if you can go one better. Is there an immensity to it, having lived the whole journey? Yeah, in a way, um, I think we're definitely a lot more hardened from our experience last year, and and as I said, we've used that to spur us on throughout the year and. 12 months later, we're back in the same position and we've got the opportunity to go one extra. So um, it is exciting for us. It's exciting for our group. We think we're a lot better team than this time last year and um, we'll get our opportunity to prove that Saturday night. And is there a sense of timing to it? So the health of the list is rude right now and <laughs> uh, and your opponents are going to live through a week where their skipper uh, is just not quite sure. Yeah, no, it is perfect timing. I think um, I think back to maybe six to eight weeks ago, there was a few games where we really had to um, grind out and, and get some crucial wins, despite probably not having our, our best 22 on the park. So um, that aspect of our season has been really pleasing and you get what you deserve. We, we grind through those weeks and um, we come to finals and we've got a fully fit list. So I think that gives us a lot of confidence. We've got a lot of confidence in our game and, and the ability of us to execute under pressure. So um, we're very pleased going into this week. Ollie, a big topic of conversation around your team balance has been how big do you go in? You play your two Ruckman, Lysett and Laddams, and then do you go with Marshall, Georgiades, Georgiades and Dixon? Obviously, Georgiades didn't play last week. You guys dominated against Geelong. Your balance looked a hell of a lot better. What are we expecting this week with the team balance? Yeah, it's a hard one, um, Brownie, to sort of pick at this stage. It's definitely not something that, that I want to be doing this week. It's a, a tough choice for the uh, match committee, but I think they've got, yeah, obviously, two choices to go a bit taller or, or smaller. Um, I think we've seen throughout the year it, it work at different stages, both going tall or small, and it's just probably the matchup that's going to suit the Bulldogs best um, this week. We've had guys unlucky throughout the year, um, in many games and there's so many hard luck stories around the AFL at the moment and unfortunately someone might be stiff for us this week but um, we've had a squad mentality about our team this year and, and that'll continue. So a lot to concentrate on Ollie. I'm just curious are you how aware are you of being the Brownlow favourite for a couple of Sunday nights time? <laughs> oh the only way I'm aware of it is everyone when I walk in the rooms or in the gym or something they call me tracker like I, I, I take no notice of it but Trent McKenzie's the biggest culprit he um he gets in my ear but um whatever happens with that will happen it's out of my control now it's a regular season thing I've got finals to focus on so it's yeah not really in my mind Definitely, if his mates have backed him, he would have, <laughs> <laughs> he would have found out about that, I reckon. <laughs> uh, Ollie, it's always great to catch up. The very best of luck for Saturday night. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Good on you. Ollie Wines there, who, who is the Brownlow favourite. Was it a tractor? Tractor, was it? Uh, is it? Is it Brownlow Tracker? Yeah, Tracker. Oh, yes, the tracker of, course, of the boats? Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. I think yes, that's well what, what the reference might be.